This is intravenous. Intravenous? Intravenous? Intravenion? Oh, ho, ho, filet mignon, intravenion. My first thought when approaching this game was Hotline Miami. And while sure they are similar, I would say Intravenous has a little more depth. And it emphasizes stealth. Or, in my case, consecutively outplaying the NPCs by navigating the level in creative ways. Or channeling my inner Rainbow Six Siege skills into this game and pre-fire peeking the enemy. The game starts with you, Steve, having a wonderful time with your brother Charles at the local shooting range. You go out and have a drink. Charles tells you to go talk to the girl who's been looking at you. You get her number and you continue having a great time with your brother. And as someone who has an older brother in real life, I would say this scene does a great job of portraying brotherly love. But then they walk into the wrong alleyway and get jumped by a bunch of degenerates. And the developers took great care to make the degenerate hateable by making him look like he comes from California. Unfortunately, Charles dies as a result of his injuries and the police are no help in delivering justice. So Steve, in his grief and rage, decides to become the ultimate grindset Sigma male, bringing justice to criminals by becoming a criminal. After killing some scum on your own, you get contacted by a guy called the Accomplice, a mysterious benefactor that provides you with weapons, grenades and gadgets. With that at his disposal, Steve sets out to take on a criminal gang, mostly alone. Yeah, this is a John Wick story. You know he's gonna get revenge, but you're there to see how he does it. And in this game, the how is up to you. And that brings us to the gameplay and mechanics. If you play Hotline Miami, you will feel at home here. And while you can totally approach this game like you would Hotline Miami, I think you will enjoy yourself a lot more if you fully engage with everything this game has to offer. The game has an emphasis on stealth, which means you can go through a level without any of the enemies ever seeing you. How would you do that? Well, enemies being able to see you is based on how visible and how noisy you are. If you are running around, the enemy can hear you. If you stand in a well-lit area, the enemies can see you. However, if an enemy is close to you in a dark area, I think they will still be able to see you. So you need to keep how close you are in mind. So if you want a stealth, then it's a great idea to scroll down with the mouse to make your guy walk slower. And then try to stick to dark areas. There are meters in the bottom left corner that tell you how loud and visible you are. There are always lots of dark areas in the level, but you're probably gonna have to make some dark areas. You can do that by flipping light switches to turn off the lights, or finding a breaker box and turning off power to the building. However, if you do that, an enemy will notice it and find it objectionable that the lights are off, and go in the building to turn the lights on, or straight to the breaker box. They will also investigate open doors and blood on the ground. So you could use this as a tactic to bait a patrolling enemy to get closer, and then once he gets close, get behind him and choke him or just straight up kill him with a knife. You need to have the knife in your loadout to do that. You can also find objects in the map like bottles or cans and use that to distract the enemy. So, the loadout. You can take five items, two guns and three gadgets. The guns are one assault rifle, shotgun, SMG or the Trank rifle if you're going stealth. And the other a pistol, some noise suppressed ones and some loud ones. There's a pretty good gun variety here and you will have to find guns in the levels to unlock them. So that rewards exploration. The three gadgets you can take, flashbang, frag grenade and empty magazine you can throw to distract enemies, a taser for quiet non-lethal takedowns, an EMP gun to take out lights, a throwing knife, my personal favorite, 
you can use it for up close takedowns or throw it for distance takedowns. Then there's the motion sensor mine. Obviously this one is really loud but you can use that as a distraction to sneak past enemies if you don't want a gunfight. Then you have your choice of armor. If you want to go loud it's probably a good idea to take the heaviest armor but you will be sacrificing mobility and if you want to peek around corners to take out the enemies while avoiding being shot yourself you might want more mobility. Having armor doesn't make you super slow, but it does make you slower. It does make you a lot louder though. And I've decided to go loud with no armor on, and while it helps being able to move fast, I found myself wishing that I had taken armor. Because getting shot with no armor is a pretty big drain on your health. Having armor doesn't make you a god though. Taking a shotgun blast while wearing armor is still pretty likely to take you down. So, there you have it. This game gives you a lot of options to cater to the specific playstyle you want to go down. Wanna be a loud one man army? You can kit yourself out for that. Wanna be a sexy solid snake slithering your way through the level? You can kit yourself out for that. One more thing. You can also make noise yourself with a B button, or you can press F and speak into your microphone. Hey. Hello. Hey. Guy. Come over. I don't know why, but I get really excited for a feature like this. Using my own microphone to interact with the game, that's cool. Okay, I've covered the weapons at your disposal, now let's talk about getting through the level itself. If you want to be hidden, you can go prone to hide behind small objects. You can also crawl through vents. And climb over some walls. And of all the things in your arsenal, I'd say your ability to traverse the terrain is the absolute strongest. You kill a guy in one place, and then the enemies go over there to find you. But you aren't there anymore. You are actually behind them. And they don't see it coming when you gun them all down. I mean, you could also just pop out of the corner they are approaching and shoot them, but if there's more than two guys, you are probably gonna die. Also, remember, you have night vision goggles and your enemies don't. That's an extra incentive to keep things dark. But your enemies have flashlights. Still, you have the advantage in the dark. You can hide bodies if you're going stealth, but you're probably not going to be able to hide the blood dripping from the body. Gunplay. With a left mouse button, you can aim. But it's not like aiming down sights in a shooter. If you're just in a gunfight with dudes, you don't really need to hold down the aiming even though I do it for comfort. The aiming is more for aiming at things on the map like light sources and security cameras. And for precision headshots. The more you move and the more you shoot, the less accurate your gun becomes. So the best practice is to peek out, stop, and then shoot, and then retreat. So I would say that no matter how you slice this pizza, you have to approach it with the precise, tactical thinking that only the Sigma male is capable of. Actually think at least a little ahead about how you will do things. When I don't do that, for example, I will kill two enemies and then run the other direction. But then I will run into two or three enemies I wasn't expecting and they gun me down. You have to be smart here. Always have an exit plan. Something you can fall back on if stuff starts to not look good. Okay, I think I've covered everything. Let's talk about the music. It's pretty damn good. I even liked the album on Spotify. There are some bangers in here. The soundtrack is made by... I can never get this name right. X Truller. That, sure, that's fine. An electro music artist. I'm not a music reviewer and I wouldn't know where to begin, so I'm going to let you hear a sample. 
A little context for the sample first. The songs, much like Payday 2, are split between Stealth, On Alert and Assault. These aren't official names for it, it's just what I'm calling it. The sample will be two songs and they will be split between the Stealth parts and the Assault parts. With that said, here's the sample. God, I love Vengeance. It's my favorite song in the OST. I've had that on repeat for like three days. Absolute chef's kiss of a song. This is the opinion part of the video, and here I will talk about issues I had with the game, and what I liked, and anything that didn't fit into the other categories. If there is one thing that really bugged me, it's that Melee was set to C. To me, it was really awkward and inefficient to use C for melee, but I could rebind the key to mouse button 4, so that complaint kinda Thanos snaps into dust. Sometimes there was this weird situation in which I couldn't interact with a body on the ground even though I was standing pretty much on top of it, and I needed to move to a specific spot to be able to interact with it. This was just weird and kind of annoying, but it didn't bother me too much and most of the time it didn't happen. I might be doing something wrong, but why can't I melee lights to break them? Let's be realistic here. Okay, I'm not saying we should be able to melee every light, but at least some of them, right? If there is a light bulb hanging from the ceiling, surely I should be able to break that with my bare hands, or with something like a hammer. But then, if I break a light bulb or one of those long pole light bulbs with my bare hands, the glass is probably gonna cut up my hands. And if I break them with a hammer, the glass might fall in my eyes or something. You know what? I'm stupid. Never mind this point. The story. I really like it. I was actually kind of at the edge of my seat about what would happen next. I would turn the game off and think, Ooh, but I kinda wanna know who he goes after next. The prologue scene with the brother, the whole time I was thinking, Yeah, the brother is gonna die or something. And even with that in my head, the game managed to make me care about him. And then when finally he died, I just thought, Oh, you motherfuckers. How, How dare, dare you? you? How dare you make me feel? Unforgivable. And with that anger, I got more immersed into the character of Steve and his rage against criminal scum. And we've all fantasized about it, right? Going after criminals and taking them out? Yes? Surely I'm not just some lone psycho who fantasizes about this. You see it on the news that some murderer killed someone and then gets out of prison in 10 years or less, and you just think, I wish I was crazy enough to do society a favor and just go to this guy's house and just making him 
unalive. But you don't do it because you're a good person and you don't kill people. So these kind of games are cathartic because most of us, I think, maybe can understand where the main character is coming from. And this is a video game. You can go through this fantasy with no one getting hurt. And just, by the way, I doubt the person that needs to hear this will watch the video, but there is a huge difference between hurting a person in a video game and hurting a person in real life. And the simplest way I can explain that difference is this. The video game isn't real. A character in a video game isn't real. Just like a character in a movie, it isn't real. But even if it isn't real, it can still have an emotional impact on you. But at the end of the day, in the video game, you aren't hurting a person. This is a rant. Let's get back to the game. I don't want to spoil too much, but I want to talk about the story a little more. I'll have a timestamp on screen if you want to skip to something more spoiler free. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, I'm gonna spoil a lot in the story. Last chance. 3, 2, 1. So the story also portrays Steve as kind of being wrong for doing what he was doing. And there are multiple reasons for that, like the criminals didn't mean to kill his brother, it was an accident. Like yeah, they are pieces of shit for attacking them, but they didn't mean to kill them. Also, the reason why the police didn't get those criminals in the beginning is because there was actually a huge ongoing investigation that Steve kinda ruined by going on his spree. Okay, that's the spoiler stuff done with, let's finish up the story by talking about Last of Us 2. The Last of Us 2 is a linear and stupid story about revenge because Ellie has killed hundreds of people but decides to not kill the person she was after the whole time. What? Why? You let her live and then she might come after you later and put your family in danger, you stupid fuck. An eye for an eye leaves everyone blind, so what, we just let criminals get away with it? We don't punish them at all? That's stupid, if we don't punish criminals, they will just keep doing crime. Intravenous isn't this dumb. It's your choice whether you kill everyone or just the ones you're going after, at least most of the time. It just does the revenge story much better and way more satisfying. So yeah, again, music is really good and I'm listening to it a lot outside of the game. And the gameplay, I consistently find myself wanting to play it more even after finishing it. And I think this will be one of those games where I replay it at least once a year. Or just have it on my hard drive all the time and open it up once in a while. If there is one thing I would ask for, it would be Steam Workshop support and map creation tools. So the player community can make new maps and even campaigns that would really pump up the replayability. And just in general would be an awesome feature. I love the gameplay and mechanics here. It's just so satisfying and really fun to go in and try to take a new approach to the game. Like in my first playthrough, I went in mostly loud with a little stealth in between. But now when I come back to it, I'm shooting out lights and taking more care in how I take guys out. Really playing the game smarter. There's a lot of replayability here. They are selling this game for $11 now, at a 15% discount, with a usual price of $13. And that is absolutely worth your money. There's a lot to chew on in this game. It's not a meal, it's a whole buffet. And I give this game an actual score of 9.9 .9 out of 10. If you had map creation tools, mod support, and gun and gadget creation tools, it will be a 10 out of 10. Well, what do you know, they added a map editor to the beta branch, and they're also adding mod support. Well, 
10 out of 10. Nice job, Roman. Let's go bowling. Subscribe for more videos about good video games made by people that aren't soulless corporate hacks.